Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Jinyu tribe, and we are over here with our scouting sisters who are the focus of some of our story on the Middle Island right now. They have finally managed to make it to a nest. In fact, it is one of the only nests that we have found on the island. So far, we have only found five nests, which can be a little bit of a problem considering all of those nests are pretty much on the outside of the island. We don't have anything on the interior of the island that will allow us to really go further in and have our tribe move inland and search for new food and resources there. However, hopefully the newest batch of scouts will be able to do just that. But we have our scouting sisters who were some of the previous generation who went before the current batch of scouts and they have been searching and searching fruitlessly for a nest for so long. And finally, Siriana, with only a couple days left to live, has given birth to Rasira, which I kind of like her. She sort of reminds me of raisins for some reason. And she is over here at the mysterious, the mysterious little island part that has a whole bunch of dead bodies and dead crabbits. We just walked up and there were just dead crabbits everywhere. And I don't know why. Do they just get so old they kill over dead? I'm not sure, but it provided a really good amount of food. So I'm hoping that that will be a good food source for them. Sianna still needs to have her baby and she still has enough days to live that I think she'll be able to see these two to adulthood, which is a very good thing. Hopefully it'll Rasira will be able to go and join the family so she can contribute to this immunity eye gene, even though she does have the hemophilia that we want to avoid, and she does have no paw, and of course she has spit snout, which is not the most popular thing with so many of the people in her community, but personally I think it's kind of quirky, and I don't know why, she just really reminds me of raisins, so I'm actually going to change her name to Rasina so that I can think about raisins when I look at her, but I'm a little worried because clearly the vultures are circling and they want this baby. So we're going to try to defend this tiny little nest. It is possibly the only other nest in the entire island other than the one we have found over here that has Rana in it and other than the mother's inlet. So this little stretch of nest where the tribe began from. We thankfully have enough of the current generation, a lot of them if you look at the family tree actually, that you can start to wander away and we don't really have to worry about dying off but I am trying to bring some of my best genetic to breed like the best genetics of the whole tribe together so that we can try to pass on um, some of the really cool genes and we're trying to keep an eye on the immunity genes we have especially with one of the rogue females we had join the tribe is Anako. I really need to grab that immunity C gene from her. We have not managed to get it into the tribe just yet. She has had two children. They are both spiky bodied. We have Sikora and we have Simi and they're pretty amazing. They're both unfortunately short sighted so they didn't hear that from Izanako. But being in the tribe, Izanako has actually never suffered from really having short sighted eyes when there's a bunch of other creatures who can keep all of this area lit up. So we've really benefited from being in a tribe with Izanako and I'm hoping that her future children will also benefit from that. Um, let's see, and we've got Anna over here. Anna is helping us out, trying to keep an eye out with her cracking ability for clams! That's exactly what we're looking for. So we're gonna harvest up that clam. Over here, we have Mimila kind of taking a moment to explore this beautiful spot. I really love this spot right here. It's so peaceful, and that is the exact spot that we had Ariali a few days ago, sitting under the tree and really just having a very, very, very peaceful moment next to the this little waterfall and this rock and the cliffside it's just so pretty here all right and then of course we have old lady laura who i've really fallen for and she is searching constantly to try to help those nice ladies those nice girls the scout sisters that she ran into earlier find a nest and she's not had any luck with that but she's she's okay she's just gathering up a bunch of nuts and berries it's actually very helpful we're finally having an uptick on the amount of food that we are seeing in our tribe even though we have expanded to several members so let's go ahead and see what this new baby is going to be like and move on to the next day. <gasps> Whoa! Whoa! Cool! Then Vanku, I think I'm going to give you a new name. Um, Your grandfather. Oh, ooh, we mutated. We mutated brown eyes, I think. 
Okay, all right, we're gonna continue to just keep that moving and grooving, I suppose. I forgot that we were trying to like mutate dots and everything. Uh, we're actually moving into the point where we're starting to do the cosmetic mutations with eye color and fur color. I totally forgot we were even working on that, uh, to be honest. So, Rokunu, um, let's see, where are you? Right over here, is that you, buddy? You have now had a son, so Van Vanku, and I want to give him a new name. He is spiky bodied, underwater breathing. He's got strength in collecting, no cracking. So he may help us out when it comes to the crabbits, but he's not going to be able to help us out when it comes to cracking open all of the clam shells. However, he's very cool looking. That's a really interesting mix of different genetics. He kind of reminds me. I wish he reminded me a little bit more of a crab so that he could actually, I mean, he has underwater breathing and swimming, so maybe we could try sending, he can't fish though. That's the thing. It's like, what can I do with you then? Oh, bunny, Okima, I don't think would hesitate to snag some of that bunny to eat. And let's grab this clam over here with Anna. Maybe we can scooch her this way a little bit. Uh, Rokunu, what to do with you now, my friend? Uh, I think Rana, did, is he a healthy baby? Let's check if this is a healthy son. He is very healthy. He has gills. Underwater breathing. What a mix-up of skills that is. <laughs> I guess he can breathe underwater and he can kind of walk around and he can attack things and collect a little bit. But it's not really any one direction with those skills, that's for sure. Okima, would you be a good mate? I guess Okima can go ahead. We can try out seeing what their babies would look like next. And speaking of babies, let's go over to the Scout Sisters. No! No! He followed us all the way here! Not happening! Oh, Siriana! Okay, okay. Uh, Tracina, you need to move right behind us. Oh my gosh! This is- No, 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 no! Oh, I wasted a move! I wasted a move! This is so intense! Oh, okay. Come on, carnivore. Okay, we got the carnivore. We're collecting the food. We're jumping into the nest. This is so intense. The the baby is born from that, that rogue horny male. We're having to fight so hard to have them even born. Siana is going to now give birth on the nest. Uh, Siriana used her last day of life lunging at the predator after falling backwards in shock, lunging at the predator. Her baby is with her sister and we've got two birds circling overhead on this very exposed little nest. This is intense. So we're going to come back to the scout sisters next turn and hopefully they're going to be fine. This crabbit is still not dead. Oh, but we did lose one of our elder females who was over here. Um, and I'm just totally lost at the mystery of why why some crabbits die and why some crabbits don't. We're still trying to figure that out. We're doing a little bit of exploring with these guys. They should be safe because I have one of my venomous fang creatures with them. And what's going on down here? Little Kirnu is still being babysat by his mother. Koanami is about to pass away, though. Uh, over here we have Isla and Dusk, and they have actually kind of fallen in love, and they've got a bit of a love story building. So Dusk will have collected up those berries, and then Isla is going to go ahead and become pregnant, and we'll send her with her big, beautiful ears and big, beautiful antlers into the nest. And there, in the distance, are her brothers and half brothers. Uh, and, and look, it's kind of cool. It's kind of like we have Dolly back actually because we see the wrong colors matched up and and everything just looks so interesting in that tide pool so Isla you remind me a lot of your your great 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 grandmother Dolly however many greats that is and we'll move the baby over here to stay with you and can I find oh there's a bunny why is there bunnies in the water I just don't understand that at all um and then maybe Rena can come help us out she can actually do some fishing uh, but it seems like I've only ever really seen fish in the waters uh, of the streams, now that I think about it, since we started getting over here. All right, I'm going to do a little exploring over here. And then Miss Siri can gather up that, and she can do some exploring over here. And then I am trying to get fish with uh, Kuklama over here. Oh, why can't I not get that clown koi? That's so frustrating. And I guess I could have her keep an eye out for fish over here. And Dusk, I'm gonna, oh, there's a crabbit. What, ready and willing to fight him? Right there. All right, what else do I have going on over here? And Reyna, you had a very interesting child. Gonna admit that. Very, very interesting child. And they would definitely have violet-eyed children. That's another thing that they would pass on together. Um, 
I guess I'll go ahead and let him have another child because come on, that one was so interesting. I'm curious to see what the next baby would look like. And Rico is taking care of her kind of like daughter of the nest, if not her genetic daughter, uh, Simi. And Simi is about to the point where she can start moving around. She may be, hmm, Simi isn't going to be able to see is the thing. So Simi, you can stay here and you're going to just be in charge of this berry bush. And then is Anako. I actually have to send uh, Nukuvan all the way back over here because <laughs> he is desperately needed as a mate for Izanako. And Izanako, now that we've got so many pregnant females, I'm going to send her down to Mother's Roost. But I need her to have an immunity C child. And she's the only one who carries immunity C. All right. Meanwhile, after all of that, Hubba Baloo, we have Nuro over here. And we have Mido. I'm going to go ahead and have Mido become pregnant with Nuro's child right now. So if we run into the rogue male, it's not going to be an issue. And we're going to continue to search and search and search for a nest. Hopefully we'll find a nest somewhere over here. Or we may have this couple end up bumping into the Scout Sisters, the long lost ants that they have over there. So lots of drama going around and lots of babies, lots of babies. Oh my goodness. I forgot I was changing up all those genetics. All right. So let's go ahead with the birds circling overhead. Let's see what Sienna's child is going to be like. Oh, her sister passed away. Why? And she has had Rarari. Oh my gosh. F and I immunity. Normal eyesight carries the blind gene. Have to really watch out carefully on that. Gill secondary, nimble fingers and no paw, and she's actually kind of healthy otherwise. She also can use her cracking ability. And that's so interesting. So we do have the possibility of adding in the eye immunity gene with these two little babies if I am careful. And we're gonna keep a very close eye on them. There's the shadows. There's the shadows just swirling overhead. Oh my gosh. So I think that Sienna is going to just have to like defend these two little ones with everything she has. This is amazing to see the birds just constantly circling over and all of the bones and bones of her sister added to the bones piled up over here. Oh my gosh. The drama. The drama that happens in this family is unbelievable sometimes. Why, Krabbits? I don't understand how Krabbits work. We'll worry about that with Roku in a little bit. In fact, I'm curious about something. I'm going to come over here. We're going to attack the Krabbit with Roku because he has venomous fangs. And then we're going to leave it alone. And we're going to see what happens. We're going to see if it'll die on its own after having attacked it. I still can't figure out how I'm going to get these koi fish things. Yeah, I can't get them. And then sometimes I can. And now I just defeated that Krabbit with one hit. Hmm. Sometimes life can be confusing. <gasps> Whoa! I knew! she would have a beautiful baby Mimi oh my gosh I actually want to name her like uh, uh, I'm gonna name her me uh, uh, dado dado uh, uh, die dido there we go dido but I'm gonna name her dido because she has dark fur but she's dark furred panda pattern immunity a and F healthy blood clotting poison fangs gills recessive and the only drawback is she has short-sighted eyes but dang, that is so cool. Oh my gosh. If I have another baby with these two, let me go ahead. I'm going to grab normal eyesight and I'm going to try to pass on normal eyesight. We're going to leave uh, Kirnu here. He's going to help defend the little one. And let's see, they couldn't possibly be mates, I don't think, because I think they have, yeah, they've got the exact same genetics. Uh, Kirnu, you're going to stay here to watch over the baby. And I'm going to have Isla. Uh, go ahead and come over here and take him as a mate again and then come back and guard the baby because they had an interesting baby too. There's just interesting babies popping up everywhere. And then in we go is Anako and guess who gets to come with you? It's Nukovan because he... He's going to be headed over to Mother's Roost because he is one of the few with uh, some immunity genes that I really need to see passed on. Do we have anything? Oh, we have, a, we have the last little clam. The last little clam that Koanami can can go ahead and get. So my gosh, very interesting. Very, very interesting things happening all over the place. All right, and you, Rokunu, have already gotten both your females uh, in the family way. So we're gonna scoot you over. Oh, and Simi is taking over for her uh, like nest mother, not her biological mother, but I, she had her nest mother taking care of her for quite a long time. All right, uh, Van Vanku, we'll come over and let you sit next to your father. 
he can breathe underwater and he can attack things, but he can't gather up fish or clams. So I don't know what I'm going to do with him. And let's move Okima into the nest. And then Anna. Um, see, we need to find spots where the clams come up more often. I'm going to pull Anna over and she can't get in the water. So we, we have kind of an interesting mix of genes popping up between everybody. Uh, and then Rana can gather up fish, but she can't gather up. So I could like push her over here and she can gather up these fish, but she can't crack open anything. So yeah, we're getting a lot more varied in what we can do with each tribe. All right, and then Kiranu here can fit. He can do everything. He can fish, he can crack things open. He only has one fishing ability. Maybe we should try to evolve in. I'm kind of curious. Uh, let me grab Boar's Fishing Tail. Let's try to put in Fishing Tail as well. We can save all of the fancy colors for later. Um, there we go. We can start gathering some of these up. All right, how are we doing? All right, we're going to come over here. We have Mystery, who has oddly been very distracted. Oh, it's because she has such pathetic collecting. That's why. I was like, she's been at that bush for a while. I've been waiting for her to finish gathering, but there she is still. Uh, but that's because she has, like, no collecting skill. That's why. All right, and we're going to continue exploring this little islet. And then over here, can we reach those fish with Mimila? Uh, oh, she can't even fish. So it's a, it's a moot question on if we could reach, reach the fish or not. Um, but we can come over here and reach these nuts. Oh no, and little old lady Laura passed away. Well, it was really fun while it lasted to have little old lady Laura around, I will admit. All right, and Mido is going to gather up these nuts and we're gonna have Nuro help her out with clearing the area. And if we can't find a nest soon, then Mido is going to have to come back all the way back to Mother's Roost. That's where the, a lot of big drawbacks are with how far away we are from everything. Got to keep an eye out because there's a bunch of birds coming around trying to get our babies. Whew. And I think that Dade Dido, she's really amazing. This is really awesome. I like her. We're going to send her in. I really want to send some of our creatures in so that they can kind of bring the deer line into the forest. But I've wanted that for a long time. There's just no nest. All right. What do we have here? <gasps> a male! Ravanta! Look at that. He is a runner for sure. Um, so he's really a runner and just kind of an opportunistic collector of any food that he can bump into. And otherwise, he's healthy, but we still don't have that sea immunity gene. Quick, new <laughs> Nukuvan, your genetics are needed. <laughs> Get over here, sir. All right, you stand there. And Izanako is going to, um, let's see, let's move the baby. Let's move this guy over here. Okay, Kiranu, I need a babysitter. Dado, you're going to get in here. All right, Isla is going to get in here. I'm going to jump over here and become pregnant with Izanako yet again. Her life has gotten very interesting. And she has had a son who actually has healthy eyesight, which I'm very excited about. So Ravanta is also passing on her stripes, too. I really like him. So Izanako, Ravanta... Uh, Nukovan, I think, I like him, I like him. He's a speedy little guy, so he's going to be exploring quite actively when he gets older. Speaking of exploring, get the fish, now I can get the fish, I don't understand. Now I can collect the fish and I can collect these berries. Who knows, who knows why all of a sudden I was actually able to feed off of the koi fish. It was kind of sudden if you ask me. And then I can just kind of sit here and collect up these fish while they go back and forth. So that's a great spot for Reina. And who's this? Oh, we have Kuvanduk. This little Kuvanduk. I'm going to give him a name more fitting. Uh, Okima. Let's go with uh, Kukima. Let's go with Kukima. Yeah, just to change up the names now and then. But Kukima, let's see what your skills are. <gasps> he has three fishing because he has the fishing tail. You guys, let's see if we can send him in after the koi fish. He may be the clown koi killer. He may start going around and gathering those up. He can't go in the water, but he can run alongside the water and hopefully collect up all of the clown fish. So that might be really fun. So Okima, congratulations on your new baby. And then Anna can come over here. Uh, is that deep water? Okay, thank goodness. It's not deep water, so she should be okay over there. And then Van Vanku, because he can breathe underwater. I guess the other thing I can do with him... Oops, I shouldn't have sent him alone. <gasps> okay, we got to keep an eye out for him. But I guess the other thing I could do with him is actually have him, like, scout. Uh, and then the people, or the creatures who can actually crack open things and do fishing can jump around. And they can, uh, they can gather up the clams with him. So that might be useful. 
see, we're starting to fall into a pretty good flow with a lot of our creatures. And then Mila, I'm tempted to send you back. Um, really, what should I do with Mamila? Have her explore around here a little bit more? Have her explore upwards, maybe? Oh, there's a berry bush! Berry bushes are very important. All right, let's see, let's gather up this fish. So there's that fish, and more fish. So we just gathered up all of the fish that showed up over there. And once again, there's one of the clown koi that we can't really reach. And Masiri, yeah, Masiri, you're terrible at collecting. So why don't we have you do more exploring? And then we'll gather up these bear, or these nuts. Dun, dun, dun. And I'm gonna have Nuro move this way. Oh, he found another berry bush, thank goodness. And let's see if we can find a nest. I'm really looking for a nest. Okay, and it doesn't look like my crab it. It doesn't really look like anything happened to him at all. Uh, even though I attacked him with a venomous fanged creature. So that didn't really help me at all. All right, and how are we doing over here? There's still a hungry creature circling, trying to come for little Ravari, and it's not gonna happen. And we have Racina, who's old enough to start exploring a little bit. And Sienna. So Racina, do you wanna help out with this, uh, this, this here crabbit? All right, I'm gonna carefully move. And, ah, oh, they're just a little bit too close to each other to help out with crabbit killing. Okay. So I'm going to have to wait. I'm going to wait because I don't want to risk uh, exposing Rarari. And I think as soon as Rarari is old enough, Sienna is going to say that it is going to be time for all of them to move off of this little death spear and hopefully work their way deep inland again so they can find the tribe once more. Hmm. And you know who I really miss? I actually miss little old lady Laura. That was really fun. Just having her collect up a few things now and then. All right, and what are we gonna do over here? We're gonna guard our baby, gosh darn it. And Kumi, Kuma, uh, Kukima, might finally become the one who can go along and start collecting all of those clown koi that we want. But we are starting to get a lot higher up on the food, so I'm quite pleased about that. And we're starting to see some very, very interesting genetics just pop up out of the woodwork as we press the different creatures together and just sort of see what happens. So I'm pretty excited about this, you guys. And I haven't given up on my dream of having a bunch of the beautiful orcas, but I think first we just need to get into the habit of being able to feed ourselves. And then we can really start breeding up something that looks very, very unique. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.